Hey there, Vaadin 7 to Vaadin 8 upgrade, a topic that has been discussed a lot with developers recently and asking if it's possible or not, is it easy or not, how to do it with big projects and so on. My name is Mahdi, I'm a developer advocate at Vaadin and today I'm going to show you an example, a live demo of trying to upgrade an application from Vaadin 7 to Vaadin 8. This application I haven't upgraded yet before and I'm going to try it live right now to go over the steps of upgrading. So uh, just to give you a quick overview about what the application is about, um, it's available here in this uh, GitHub repository. It's actually a JBoss uh, BRMS uh, demo application. It uses JBoss Developer Studio and Vaadin UI as a framework. I have upgraded this application before from Vaadin 6 to Vaadin 7 and wrote uh, many articles about it and migration guide uh, what, what should be done. So this is, for example, the picture of the application, how it looked like before uh, when it was still Vaadin 6. And those are uh, the basic steps that I went through them. Now, um, let's close this and go to the application. This is how the application nowadays look like. Maybe I can uh, increase this browser a little bit. Let's refresh the page. Here we go. So the application is pretty simple. It, uh, it allows me to select items and add them to the shopping cart. Then it applies some uh, kind of business logic on the back end. This is what the demo is about from a JBoss perspective. And then when I click checkout, uh, it gives me some kind of demo receipt telling me uh, what are the items that I have selected, if there is a promotion and if there is uh, shipping and so on. You see that the shipping has been calculated based on the items. So if I go and select um, different items and add more items, you see that uh, the shipping cost increases, but at some point when you add enough number of items or enough values, then the shipping uh, gets detected. And also there is a promotion that gets applied. When I click checkout, you see that uh, the shipping cost is zero. And there is also, um, well, I think the promotion is not applied at this point, except only for shipping, but there are some items with promotion and so on. So this is uh, like the kind of the demo. Uh, in this demo, my demo right now, I'm not gonna force, uh, I'm not gonna focus on uh, the business part, but I'm gonna focus on the UI part. Again, so uh, this is just the the demo of how the application work. And for the source code, maybe I can uh, go quickly over how it's constructed. So it consists of uh, the main UI class. This is the main UI and entry point of the application. It's a CDI UI, uh, so it's a CDI application basically. And I have uh, three main views here. So shopping cart view and product view, and uh, both of them extends the abstract view. So abstract view is kind of like the parent view from which uh, you have to uh, implement or extend any view that you create in this application. And then uh, we have a util. Uh, it's a utility for matter and then uh, update sh shopping cart event. It's a CDI event that uh, uh, make uh, enter uh, communication between views in inside the application. So communication between those two views is done through this event. And then I have some uh, data logic for converters. So double to string converter, um, some old school Vaadin 7 uh, converters, and then uh, string property value generator, which is, um, a property value generator for the grid. And finally, I have uh, created some components here. So I have the shopping cart line. It uh, represents one line. So this, uh, actually this line, this line is called shopping cart line. So uh, constructing this line inside this view um, is created using those components. And finally, the checkout window is the window when, when you click uh, checkout in the window that appears here. So this window is called checkout window. Uh, I also have to say that uh, shopping cart view and products view are basically uh, straightforward. This, this area is the shopping cart view and this, uh, sorry, this is the shopping cart view and this is the product view. 
So a very simple application, probably not uh, big, not uh, enterprise uh, heavy application, but um, at least I'm fairly uh, positive that uh, this is going to cover uh, most of what we need in uh, uh, daily migration for Vaden 7 to Vaden 8. Of course, migrating from Vaden 7 to Vaden 8, why, why the developers, uh, the R&D team, decided to give a major version upgrade from Vaden 7 to Vaden 8? It definitely means that uh, there is a major changes and the upgrade uh, process probably not gonna be um, like straightforward just by changing one API or ju just changing one uh, library or something like that. But uh, the good news is uh, there is some good documentation, some good examples, and also there is a nice migration tool that somehow uh, is going to help in the migration. We're gonna see this all in this video and let's see how much uh, effort is needed to perform the migration throughout the video. So, uh, I'm going to close this uh, GitHub. I'm trying to limit the resources a bit because the application is actually quite heavy and it's eating up my memory. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to close as uh, many uh, pages as possible and uh, go back to this documentation page. So this documentation page tells me um, the basic outline of how to perform the migration. It tells me that um, I need to uh, change all dependencies from uh, using the direct Vaden server, for example, to the compatibility version to be able to maintain the old code that is still running Vaden 7. Uh, this is actually a very cool tool to have because uh, it lets you make the migration gradually. You don't need to like stop and wait a few months till the migration is completed and then uh, perform uh, the final migration. You can perform the migration in two steps. And this is basically exactly what I'm going to try to do today in this uh, demo. And it tells you the other um, compatibility uh, packages that you can use. And then um, there is also migration guide for Pro Tools. There is no Pro Tools used in this project, so I'm not gonna go over this, but for add-ons, it's an important mention that you need also to check the latest version of add-ons because if you if you are using a Vaden 7 add-on, then um, most probably it's not going to work, or in many cases it's not going to work. Um, so this is a migration tool, and this link explains how to use the migration tool, and then uh, it tells um, how the migration tool is going to happen. So changing imports, and then a widget set is going to change. So um, also the uh, if if you want to keep the old um, Vaden Seven components, then you need to also update your widget set if you have a custom one. Um, in, in my demo today, I'm going to try to avoid this uh, widget set as much as possible and move everything to the uh, newly developed Vaden CDN uh, for widget set compilation. So this is probably going to limit my time as much as possible. And then here, um, it also um, tells you that for Vaden Designer or for the declarative format in general, you need to also upgrade uh, the format. Uh, we don't use designer and no and no declarative format in this um, project, so nothing to worry about. So to start, I'm basically going to start from our palm file. So the first step, actually, to document this, I'm going to uh, write it in a word document. Um, let's create a new one. So step number one, I'll increase the font a bit as well. So step number one, check POM file. This is the first important step because the POM file is probably uh, uh, is having uh, the old dependencies and, and old uh, structure and so on. My best way of doing this is actually creating a new Vaden application, very dummy Vaden application. So I'm going to go to vaden.com slash maven and create a dummy application using this command. So this is uh, going to create a, a Vaden application using 
the latest version 8.0.6 and let's run it over here and uh, this is application then open it in Atom um, for some reason it didn't open but Yeah, for some reason it doesn't open, so let me open it this way at project folder, uh, desktop, and then VOD and app. Yeah, here we go. So I'm going to compare between the POM file here and the POM file created here. So this is my very simple test application just to make sure that the structure is the same, the parameters are the same, what need to be upgraded and so on. So the first thing that I have here, here is actually uh, the version for, um, for this project. And maybe it's a good practice to upgrade this version as well so that when I push it, uh, people can uh, distinguish between it and between the old version. So I'm gonna call it snapshot three and then we have here the maven compiler plugin um, what is the maven compiler plugin used here actually this font is a little bit too big yeah. so the compiler source and target here are 1.8 for for java 8 so i'm going to upgrade them to vaden to java it as well and then um, for the group id or for the artifact uh, maven resource plugin um, it's using 2.6 so also i want to check what kind of um, plugins are used by uh, this project so maven war plugin it's using version 3.0 and the clean plugin is using 3.0 and so on. So apparently all uh, the plugins uh, have been migrated to version 3.0. So just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna migrate those as well to 3.0. It can work without 3.0 or it cannot work, I don't know, but maybe it's a good practice to just uh, upgrade them as well. So I'm going to upgrade this one, this one. Actually, uh, for the Maven War plugin, the package exclusion uh, is a bit less at this point. We don't need to exclude this anymore. So I'm going to remove this one. And Now I have the uh, Vaden Maven plugin. So let's compare them. Actually, no much has happened. So it's the same and the goal is more or less the same. Now uh, for the source plugin, let's upgrade it as well to 3.0.0. And for the clean, I'm going to upgrade it as well. So the clean plugin, the configuration is the same. Uh, for the GBoss, I'm not going to touch that. So this is configured to work with a specific version of GBoss. And then uh, those are the profiles that are used to run the application and run the test and so on. Uh, most probably, I'm not uh, going to touch those. So, key IE is the featured thing here in this demo. This is the whole thing about this demo from uh, GBoss BRMS perspective. Yeah, I'm not going to touch any of those profiles. OpenShift profile, no, not touching that. And then dependencies. So, 
here we start to so those are the dependencies for Rebus and Vadenbaum. Nothing to change at this point. And now we have the Vaden version. So now we can start to change this to Vaden version 8.0.6. And the same for the plugin version. And then the repositories, JBoss repository, Vaden add-on, nothing to change. Um, now the dependency. So this is JBoss dependency. And uh, now Vaden libraries. So here we start to have um, to do some work. And as explained in the document, we need to uh, upgrade those artifacts to use the compatibility. Uh, package as well. So the compatibility package contains inside themselves the Vaden aid packages. So it's safe to uh, just add compatibility server here. So I will just copy this and add it everywhere. Um, this is not part of Vaden, so this is an add-on. I cannot do anything about it at this point. And then validation, Java EE web API. This is for CDI, so probably will not change it at the moment. So yeah, at this point, all I have done is upgrading all the dependencies. So I have here BRMS libraries, nothing to change here. Kjar test dependencies, nothing else to change at this point. So at this point, all I have done is um, migrating the POM file from using old dependencies and old versions to the new versions. We can take a look at uh, this POM file just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. So. Um, here was just a normal definition of the project. And then I have here properties for um, compiler and which uh, this also can be taken. So this is the widget set compilation mode, uh, which is something new in Vaden 8 as well. And we can basically um, add it in the properties section here as well. And instead of local, as I said earlier, I'm going to switch to CDN to make the widget set compilation happen on Vaden servers instead of um, happen locally. And this is uh, actually something very uh, efficient. Uh, the only drawback will be if you are running into a proxy or firewall or without internet or something like that, then you need to switch to local mode. Otherwise, the compilation will happen in a matter of fraction of a second sometimes. Um, now the repository is there, the dependency is there, and then uh, Java X servlet, oh, I don't use that anymore because I'm using CDI. I have a server push. I'm not using push in this application, so I don't need this dependency. Uh, I have client compiled, I have a theme, and then some plugins. So I have the WAR plugin. We have the Maven plugin. We upgraded that. We have the Clean plugin. Uh, Jetty. I don't need Jetty because this application works on GBoss. And then uh, the profiles. Uh, nothing changed in here. So at this point, my POM file I would say is fully migrated, uh, except that. I'm expecting a lot of errors. So let's try to compile this project and see how it goes. Yes, a lot of errors. So now uh, it tells me that item is not found anymore, property is not found anymore, and so on. And here comes the second important uh, or interesting part, which is um, the Vaden migration tool. So Vaden migration tool is, or upgrade tool, is going to help me to automatically fix those imports to uh, to point to the correct 
uh, package names. So I'm gonna run it. And here we go. Everything now is fixed. Now let's compile one more time and see if we still have any errors. A lot of warnings and those warnings Actually, I saw one error. Okay, let's let's come to that later. But those warnings are uh, expected because this means that uh, I have a de uh, deprecated APIs that I'm using in the project. And my goal is to get rid of all those deprecated APIs. Of course, my goal number one is to get rid of all errors and make the project work again with the Vaden 8 version. And then the goal number two is to get rid of those deprecated APIs. So let's see why I have an error here. Set converter. So value, so there is no set converter anymore in Vaden 8. We do that through binders. And value is a label field. And label field, um, so label field is coming from the add-on. So this is the second part uh, that I was expecting. I was seeing this coming, that uh, add-ons need to be upgraded as well. I'll go back to this document first to document what I'm doing. So step number two is run Warden upgrade eight. And now step number three is upgrade add-ons. Maybe uh, step number three should have been done before running the upgrade or after it doesn't make any difference actually um, yeah let's let's go and try to upgrade the add-ons of my project so the add-ons were um, were here the Veritin add-on and the Vaden icons add-on. The easiest way is to just go to Vaden directory. So Vaden community directory and search for Vaden icons to see the latest available version. Um, okay, so uh, Vaden Icons is not available for Vaden 8 and uh, that's something that is not surprising me actually uh, because uh, nowadays Vaden Icons actually are part of the core framework. So the good news, this add-on has been integrated into, yeah, it's, it's written here actually, this has been integrated into Vaden Framework 8 since 8.0.0. beta 2. So the good news is what I can do is basically get rid of this dependency at all. Good thing. Uh, the second add-on is Veritin add-on. Let's also search in the directory. And Veritin Aidan is actually developed by Matti Tahvonen, which is um, my colleague here at Vaden. And luckily he has upgraded his add-on to um, version 2.0 that supports uh, Vaden 8. So good news, I can um, copy the dependency here or just upgrade the version and replace this old version. And now let's recompile the project to see if there are any errors left. So upgrade add-ons. This is uh, very important and tricky because if um, add-on is not supported in Vaden 7, then you're gonna run into some troubles, I guess, and you need to figure out how to solve this problem. If add-on not upgraded. Now I see some uh, errors. So um, this is coming from the old Vaden icon add-on. We can, re we can uh, remove it. And this as well, we can remove it. We don't need it anymore. And 
this has been fixed automatically by removing the unneeded imports and this as well we can remove it. compiling again here we go okay again set converter is complaining the same error as before okay um, so as I was saying, set converter is an old API and value is probably now after being upgraded to Vaden 8 is no longer accepting uh, the set converter method. Uh, luckily, if you open the Veritin add-on and you read on the GitHub project, you will find that um, one of the new enhancements done by this add-on, especially by Matti, is that he made a similar format for using a backward compatible component by adding V7. Uh, here or here. Yeah. So once I say Vaden 7 or V7, then it's going to use uh, compatibility packages inside this, uh, inside this add-on. This is actually a very good, excellent practice by add-on developers, and I would highly recommend um, all add-on developers to do something similar to make sure that their add-ons are used in compatibility mode as well as in um, uh, in Vaden 8 mode. Now, all dependencies that we're uh, referring to um, the old Veritin, is now complaining as well and we probably need to uh, fix this as well so adding v7 should remove all the problems yeah here we go now no errors anymore that's good and since we uh, made a huge modification in the project and migrating to Vaden 8 and so on, then it's a good practice to um, clean and reinstall from the beginning. Especially that now we are also migrating the widget set and modifying the widget set and add-ons and everything. So this is a good time to recompile widget set from the beginning and install from the beginning. And as we can see, I'm expecting that um, widget set compilation is not going to take time. Uh, the good news, it didn't take time. The bad news is there are some errors. Um, so the theme has some error. And this error I have seen before, uh, it's coming from the fact that I'm using uh, the compatibility package of the um, uh, the compatibility package of uh, the theme add-on, but uh, there is something that is not working with it. That's why the workaround for now is to actually add the new dependency as well. So this hopefully going to fix the problem. As you can see, I'm, I'm trying this live with you, uh, going through the problems that anyone might go through them and see how we can fix them. Hopefully this can gather a compilation of good um, resources for other developers to follow. Here we go, build success. So now my build is succeeding and uh, my next step is to, um, to deploy this in my uh, server. I have created this do.sh. This is a small script that I've created uh, for the sake of this demo to make the deployment quicker. Otherwise, uh, the deployment is a little bit not straightforward in this uh, application. And now um, let's refresh this page and see how it looks like. And now we can try one more time. So now I have a problem with CDI. Did we upgrade the VOD and CDI add-on?
so CDI Valen CDI. So I missed this. Actually, yeah, because it's listed under BRMS Libs. This probably should be listed here under the add-ons section. This is why I missed it. And of course, the version has been also uh, changed. So this can be checked from Vaden directory as well. Let's see what is the latest version that works with uh, Vaden 8. Uh, now, now that I remember, Vaden CDI actually is also now um, Vaden is now provided by uh, the POM file, so I don't need to actually have a version. But let's see. So this is for Vaden. It it uses uh, version two, but um, if I remove the version, it should read it from the BOM file automatically. Yes. It worked. And now let's make a redeployment. So to document this, um, I'm going to just add a side note, consider keeping Vaden theme dependency. And see. Um, what else? Yeah, now it's loaded, and now the server is redeploying the changes. It's a little bit slow. Let's see the modifications. So the second here, the second item here is that Vaden CDI is provided. No need for version. Same for uh, the Spring add-on as well, and Spring Boot and so on. Here we go. So um, now the application has been uh, migrated, but we can see that. Um, the widget set is not compiled. So maybe I need to forcefully, so let's make a force clean and force file and compile. But when I see this, I feel happy because it means that uh, something is really happening. The migration is done, but um, it's even uh, reading from the V7 uh, packages, which means that the migration is done, but all I need is just to recompile the widget set for my custom add-ons. In in this case, it's uh, apparently the very thin add-on. So, um, I've done the compilation. It was too quick, I guess. then install. I don't need to run this install because it's gonna run here from this file, but maybe I can just copy those commands and use them. So this is manually doing the a redeployment. And then do dot search. So one more step that we can add here consider using, not using Vaden client compiled when you have other 
add-ons. Now this is going to get reloaded again from the beginning and it's gonna take uh, some time. Um, so we don't have to do anything now except just sit and wait. There we go. Now it was uh, actually working a little bit faster. And we see that everything still works. Let's test it out quickly. Add to cart, uh, check out, it works. Of course, this is not like the perfect testing mechanism. There should be some kind of automated and uh, integrated testing as well. But um, what I'm trying to do here is just for simplicity, making sure that overall uh, things are working. And of course, if something later on I discovered that the test didn't pass, I'm gonna notify you. Um, so at this point, I, I have the application using Vaden 8 and it works. It has been migrated and I can say that, okay, my work is done, but I'm not gonna stop at this point. What I'm gonna do next is, um, I'm going to go over the components and migrate them one by one. 